Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hey everyone, this past Friday, I was informed that Kyle Ashenhurst, also known as KDA to the show, had passed away on Monday. Here's our dedication, no, our celebration of Kyle. No. Podcasting, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the podcast Otaku Generation. Their continuing mission to explore strange new fandoms, to seek out new anime, new manga, to boldly go where a bunch of guys and a few women have gone before. Spock was banging Uhura. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. So this is show 690. August 29th, I guess, is, is the Wednesday. And I think it's a correction. I think the obituary reports that Kyle had died on Wednesday. Uh, I don't know where Monday came from, but somewhere in the conversations, yeah. I think that came up. I, You know, I don't even know where to begin. I got a bunch of people on Skype. I have a few people here in the room that we all we all knew Kyle well enough. I, I am sad i think that is that is obvious i'm mourning in weird strange ways but i am i'm i'm coming to the acceptance that he is no more um and i really just want to talk about sort of our um wonderful experiences we even have some clips bryce had grabbed a bunch of stuff uh i have a couple two things of note uh it all sort of started with us with uh his steam boy review um and i think i'm gonna end the show with that and uh, certainly, uh, the people that we have on Skype, we have Teku Todd, uh, we have Brian Dow, uh, also known as Apocalypse Dow, and we have Aaron Clark. And um, we're just sort of coming together to do something special, uh, very informal. Um, I think it's really important to, to state that Kyle had um, a very unique interface to us on the podcast. And How we, so? Well, he started with us pretty early. Show 11 was when we sort of officiated him. Um, the, the story was he was working uh, not too far from where I lived at that mm-hmm. time. And uh, and he didn't live that far away anyways. So he was like, hey, can, uh, can I stop by one day? And I think at the point we were, I think we were recording on Mondays. And, in, mm-hmm. um, and then I would edit on Tuesday and then the show would be released on Wednesday. So he stopped by after work, and I remember I opened up the door, and there's Kyle with, like, Wawa coffee in his hand, and he clearly has a Wawa coffee, and he was very sort of uh, the coffee it got to him. He was just, like, super excited (laughs) to see the studio, to meet all of us, and, you know, he has this great broadcaster's voice. Like this wonderful voice. And mm-hmm. I'm like, why isn't this being captured? <laughs> and then, you know, he has like some smarts and some wit about him. And uh, mm-hmm. he interfaced chemistry wise with us really well. And so the irony is when I was at his wedding, so me and Ben were at his wedding, and I'm trying to remember who else was there. But we're sitting there, and I got to see all his brothers. Mm-hmm. And all his brothers have, the, you can see that Kyle is related to them. Oh. They all have a similar look to Kyle. And they look like uh, a fleet of TV broadcasters. That's what Kyle looked like. He looked like he needed to be behind the news desk and, <laughs> and just doing the news or the financial report or whatever. Yeah. And, and he had the voice to, to go with it. And so does all his brothers. 
So uh, it's just like, why didn't they do that? That was that's sort of the indicator for that. But he had such a unique relationship with us, um, and I think we all kind of loved him in, a, in our very own special ways. Um, certainly, I have had a, a connection with him on and off throughout the years, and. Um, and you know, I have all kinds of funny little moments with with, with Kyle. Uh, I just I just do. And so I adored the guy for for the person that I know. Um, and it I you know I will be sad for probably a while that uh, he's he's no more. Um, and you know I don't I don't regret that I haven't stayed like I haven't had lunch with him in years. Yeah. It it was just because he he got married. And moved then on he, to a new phase in his life. Yep, and, and then he had a little one, mm. and a little one with a wife, and then, and then a brand new house, like his second house that he bought, or actually technically uh, in the marriage second house, in general third house. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's not that he moved away, he just was busy being a parent and mm-hmm. having a life. Um, and I say that knowing that Todd and Brian <laughs> have gone through that themselves, too. So um, Yeah, Brian, Brian and I have been married for quite a few years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We, uh, that's right. Exercised some laws that have changed and, and we were able to uh, legally adopt. And, uh, <laughs> and now sorry. I'll tell you, uh, Todd never takes me to dinner anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, I just kind of want to celebrate the wonderfulness that, um, that, that definitely was Kyle. Yeah, so I, I don't even know where to begin to start. I know um, we have some clips. Do we want to do that? Uh, oh, actually, uh, Matt, in front of you, uh, Albert had uh, mm. sent in an email. Could you, could yes, you read has. that? Okay, we got an email from Albert, and he says, Hey, guys, um, it really came as a huge shock hearing about the passing of Kyle, a.k.a. Kyle Dragon Ash. Kyle had a certain level of wit and humor that you didn't see with many people these days. He always brought it where whenever he was on OG, and I only wish we could have heard him produce some more of his his great content. Every time he would review a show or a movie, he gave some good, constructive criticism, along with adding a little bit of sarcasm just for the fun of it. Sadly, we have lost someone who was truly special to all of us, and hopefully you, the newer OG listeners, will get to hear why with this week's show. And to all the old-school listeners like myself who remembered that charming vocal personality of his from all those years ago, join us as we reflect and pay tribute to our fellow otaku friend with some of his best moments on OG. Here's to you, Kyle. Cheers. Albert. P.S. My favorite OG moment with Kyle was with Apocalypse Dowell, who wrote and sang a song to him so that he would not give up watching anime. Oh. Yeah, and um, we'll play yeah. that a little later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I snipped it out of the show. I did my best to, mm-hmm. to scour. I actually, Bryce did a lot of scouring. How, how many shows did you I, go I, through? I, just, I didn't listen to all these shows we have a lot of shows i don't really yeah, know this I've been around yeah, for a yeah. while yeah, <laughs> so yeah. i just sort of was like scrubbing through episodes that kyle was in i basically went to his segments and just try to grab mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. i thought sounded funny but like i said now much time to do this so these might not be his best stuff but i think they're pretty funny clips i found <laughs> yeah yeah kyle um, kyle always had an interesting thing to say about whatever it is we were discussing he would prepare stuff in advance he had insightful views on things and it's it's a real shame that that we didn't like have him on the show for longer. Yeah, uh, I um, I always refer to him, in, at least in my brain, as like my most adult friend <laughs> <laughs> because he had a very he worked for a very conservative and he had a very respectable job. And him sort of like moonlighting with us on the podcast was like <laughs> probably a little bit in conflict. And when I listen to even like show 11, I can hear even through that show, um, there's lots of our sort of um, uh, raunchy wit, yeah. raunchy <laughs> comedy. Talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Just yeah. not appropriate. And he just as a conservative adult just sort of took – he didn't take – 
He personally didn't take offense to it, but I knew I could see it on his face, this little concern. Was like, like, I hope work never finds out. And you got to keep in mind, this is the infancy of podcasting, and there was no long tail social media things that were uh, rampant like um, like Twitter. I don't know. Was Facebook around then? It wasn't like public to everybody. Yeah. No, it was only available to colleges, yeah. I thought. Yeah. Today, this, this would have been a lot worse of a situation, but back then, uh, I, yeah, I could always sense, you know, with him, that's that's kind of why he was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> you know, I love being here, but I I can't be associated with this. <laughs> we were yeah. really raunchy back then. Listening to these old shows, I'm like, wow. Yeah, and, and, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was like listening back to like the one where I was a guest on the show, and I was like, oh my god, I do not remember this level of locker room talk, but it is <laughs> yeah, absolutely no. there. But it was it was all a good fun. None of it. We were we were good friends. None of this was like uh, uh, you know. It was offensive, but but in the same respect, uh, I I can't even begin. This is what I edited. You guys have no idea what I cut out. <laughs> yep. Oh, I OG believe after hours is on the cutting room floor. That's oh nice. yeah, no, and and so Bryce was like, "Well, you have all the masters." I go, "Yeah, there's a stack of hard drives over there, and somewhere when I moved in the boxes, there's a ton of like CDs and DVDs where these things are archived." And yes, I have the original stuff somewhere. But uh, oh boy, it, was it, would all, take, it would take. It was forever. all Aaron's fault, just so we're clear. Not, you know, uh, not the Aaron that's on today. The other Aaron. No, no, no. It was it was uh, <laughs> Kilbasa Knight Aaron's fault all the time. Um, yeah, he was just into like gross things and, yeah. and things. I think too for the sake of like outraging people. Yeah. Also, in my defense. I was a freshman in college, so my maturity level was. Let's say significantly lower than it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't don't worry. We we had the disclaimer, and yeah. and I think that that saved a few people. But it was all in, in good yeah. fun, yeah. and and I think that's what Kyle loved. Um, and so I, you know, I had a connection with a guy, and that was that was nice. And uh, but you know, over time, he had a second phase of his life, and uh, priorities hit. And mm-hmm. so it's not that I'm always here when people want to surface. Right. Yeah. And and that does happen. Uh, I have my buddy Jeff was a roommate, good friend. Um, he's gotten married. He's had he has little ones. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while he surfaces and I'm here. Um, and I know that that's how people know know me. I'm always around. Um, yeah. Even You're if, the guy that everyone knows, uh, even if I'm in the middle of other things. I mean, we're talking about podcasts today. Uh, like, you know, OG in general is producing five podcasts. But the fundamental things that, um, you know, we're producing a lot more content. And though I'm busy and I hear myself say it a ton, but I'm always available when people need me. And that that was the fundamental point of it. The little bit of trivia for the opening, with the, and that's a shortened version. There's a longer version. Um, the Star Trek opener? Yeah, the Star Trek opener. So I had this idea because... The when they rebooted Star Trek, and I guess it was two thousand nine, right? Next that, generation Star Trek. Uh, not next generation, but when they were doing the movies, and J.J. Abrams was oh. attached to it. Oh, right? okay. That, that was generation. around the. We're not the, that old. <laughs> yeah, oh, around okay. around that time. I was like, all right, I let me. And so I reached out to TV's Kyle, and I said, hey, could you could you whip up something, some kind of music? It was completely different than what I thought. He went completely classic. And so that's Kyle Acapella doing that, layered, did some tracks, and mm-hmm. he flipped that around in like hours. And then I called up Mr. Ashtonhurst, KDA, Kyle, and I said, hey, how's your Shatner? <laughs> and he's like, I could do a Shatner. And so... Uh, I thought and, you'd never ask. Said. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, he stopped on by, and I think he was coming to the show that, whatever that show was. Mm-hmm. Um, but he stopped on by for, you know, a little bit early, and he sat down in, where you're sitting right now, Matt, and he recorded, he did a, like a three-minute impression, uh, and I have, and he just went right through. I, he read what I, I wrote down, mm-hmm. and and uh, then he threw in the little spoiler at the end. And that was it. The two Kyles have combined, and that was the result of it. And so I just thought, um, you know, I love doing those special openers, but they mm-hmm. take a lot of time. In this case, this was amazing, and it was so frictionless. Uh, and and the two Kyles sort of came together, and they've never met each other. 
Um, but that's sort of the special moments that happen around here. Um, and anybody who knows Alan knows that How's Your Shatner is not the weirdest thing he's ever, ever started out a phone call. It certainly is not. Yeah. As common as How Are You with Alan. Yeah, yeah. How's your Shatner? <laughs> Alan, could you talk a little bit about, like, you said that he came on first on the episode 11. Uh, was he a, a listener or a contributor before that and then started joining the show? So he was the first audience member to watch us record live. And that oh. was the moment where I was talking about he opened up the door and he was like so uh, enthusiastic to meet everybody. And it was just like, oh, my God, like I'm in a he was fanboying is uh -huh. what he was doing. And, you know, at that point and I don't I didn't go back through the shows, but obviously there was a show or two before that that he surfaced. And I'm like, this guy is awesome. And then I reached out and I said, hey, um, you know, we had built like a little friendship. And I said, hey, do you want to do you want to come on the show? Yeah. And he's like, OK. Um, but I <laughs> you know, the, the premise is if you want to come on the show and be a cast member, especially a regular one, you have to do something. Um, and so that was the rule then. It generally is kind of the rule now. You have to contribute. And he's like. Uh, and Bryce was going to college yeah, exactly at that yeah. time. So mm -hmm. he's like, all right, I'll take over uh, news or it was reviews, I guess. Reviews, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, and so the first thing he reviewed was Steam Boy. <laughs> um, so, so he converted you from audience listener to cast member. Um, I will say, though, Kyle wasn't mad at me for a little bit because then Dan surfaced. In mm -hmm. those early shows, at least in that first year or maybe second year or not. And Dan was very different from Kyle, oh. both in personality <laughs> yes. and outlook. Oh, yeah. No, they're totally like complete opposites from each mm -hmm. other. Um, and so Dan, Dan, I, I, he was the second sort of yeah. person to witness us. And, uh, and so he had some unique insights and he got along with people pretty well. And so I invited him as just, you know, it, cause at that point we had like some turnstile, we had some regulars and then we had people that weren't really fully committed like Sean and Robin, um, or Pat, uh, they were in and out, mm -hmm. um, as you know, as whatever the situation, um, you know, occurred. And so, uh, Dan seemed to, uh, he seemed to work close enough. He seemed to be in the area. He was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And Kyle was a little mad at me because he was the second audience member turned into a cast member. And he was a little <laughs> mad at me for, for, for a long while, actually. So, uh, you know, these are the things like, even though we had a lot of fun on the show, we did. You heard a lot of what's recorded, but you, got, you guys have to understand, I spent hours cutting a lot of stuff out to make it consolidated. Uh, and there certainly was over the years a tremendous amount of drama that was unnecessary. Um, but, you know, when I listened to some of those early shows, I was like, yeah, we were we were so different back then. Um, and it's not that we've gotten old and grumpy. It's just um, we we're not just anyway. we're Get just those darn kids off of my podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're just a little more focused on, on it. Um, the the uh, the adult who made us more adult was Paul. <laughs> Paul number two, that is. Uh, not Lobster Pig. Kyle Paul. Dragon Ash. Yeah. So um, I know we're going to play the Steam Boy review later, but I think we should probably give some context to that. So that was like his first review, right, after he took over reviews. And yeah. I didn't, as I recall, he I might have called it an abomination in the eyes of God, not to completely spoil the review. <laughs> I just remember that line. Yeah. And I remember it drew an alarming number of Steam Boy defenders, got very passionate about that. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because I, I watched Steam Boy for the first time yesterday in honor of Kyle. Um, probably because of his review I haven't watched for the past 14 years. <laughs> and I got to say, uh, it's not good. <laughs> not a very good movie. <laughs> I don't know why I call it an abomination in the eyes of God, but <laughs> it's definitely, it looked nice. So I just, it's funny to me that like some people were so defending of that movie back then. Because you look at like the ratings on it now, it's like a 6.9 on IMDb. So it's just funny that apparently it wasn't yeah. as loved as we thought it all was. <laughs> I guess a vocal minority. <laughs> I remember he was worried at the time too because he took over reviews because he thought people didn't like weren't going to like him as much as they liked me because he had unpopular opinions. I, I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, he just had some concerns of like, dude, you sound way better on mic than I ever did. <laughs> so trust <laughs> me, just keep doing what you got to do, and you're going to have the fans are going to start to like you, no question. Yeah, um, and he would review a few things as opposed. To, I would review like five things a week, even though I yeah. You know, so and they were kind of smaller. I reviews. um, you know, most people, especially back then. Our, our culture is not camera shy or mic shy anymore. Um, 
But, you know, like back then, people were so uncomfortable in front of them, like, and then hearing themselves and then getting self-conscious. And even Kyle was doing it. And I just I just looked at him one day and I was like, dude, you have a broadcaster's voice. Do you realize this? Right. And you're not you're not like you have an opinion and you know how to articulate it. Like you deserve to be on mic. Um, and it, it just took him time to convince himself of that. And he seems so natural mm-hmm. right on the second we give him a mic and it is dedicated to him. Yeah. And, you know, bless him. He was able to do his segments so well with all the like interruptions, di- uh, interruptions <laughs> and diversions <laughs> that people would bring up while he's trying to talk. And he always had a good way to like work it back to the review as well as being a good joke in the moment as well. That's one thing I appreciated listening to some of his yeah. clips over the I weekend. Tell you, the most adult friend you could have. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I feel bad because whenever he was he was doing his reviews, we were the idea for the for the show was that it would be this like big interactive morning zoo kind of thing. <laughs> so I would always you know pop in with comments and questions or, or like a joke or something and he would just sort of like glare at me and I was never sure if he was <laughs> serious about it or if he was just like dude you're interrupting my flow um, a little both actually is yeah. usually what that was yeah, so it was definitely both I, I feel bad about it <laughs> yeah. so I was just trying to contribute you know in viewpoints and keep it spontaneous yeah. but he he was not really appreciative of it i thought yeah i i did the live stream but we didn't really have people completely mic'd we did a little early stuff early on uh with the cheap whatever set of gear that i had around um but yeah no like having you know like video podcasts that happen today i mean if you could see what we were all our reactions to everything back then uh, this is why i take pictures uh it's just because uh it's the it's the visual cues we give each other <laughs> Mm. that you don't you don't know that that are on you know on mic um and yeah so and, but that's where he would retract right he would go yeah. right back into going back with his flow no matter how difficult it was it's astounding how much he can communicate with a single finger <laughs> <laughs> uh, i miss you todd <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah so well uh, yeah so i don't know it's just um yeah can i interject before we get too far off the topic yeah oh um, wow. so alan and i just a little history alan and i were co-workers a long long time ago in a galaxy far away yeah and uh we just kept in touch ever since and uh he invited me to the podcast and i was like dude i don't know anything about what you guys want to talk about right <laughs> and he said well you know we're going to do some tech stuff so you can talk about some of that and i'm like okay so i'll read and gadget and gizmodo and read that to the listeners and he's like, okay, that's cool. So I, I swore, you know, like podcasts were a thing that it was so new, as we've mentioned at the time. And, you know, I was like, there is no likelihood that anyone's going to listen to this, you know. And I didn't, I don't know if I just didn't believe in it. I was a skeptic, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I cannot tell you how strange it was that someone not only like communicated with us over the whole thing, but then showed up <laughs> to like watch us do this live. Like that, that was such a an unusual moment for me um, <laughs> just in general, you know? Uh, and again, you know, as Alan said, the whole thing about speaking on mic and having people listen to it and the nerves behind it. And, you know, we were only, uh, you know, what, 10, 11 episodes in, like we said, and right, yeah. mm-hmm. I was still very nervous about all that stuff and, you know, didn't want people <laughs> really acknowledging that I was on the show. And, you know, <laughs> that, that was just such a strange, I, I remember how nervous I was that episode. Like, even more so yeah. than usual. You know, I'm just like, this is so weird. Ty, were you uh, there for the very first episode? Yeah, I think so. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, remember when we, we first recorded and everyone was so uncomfortable and they, we mm. should have happenstance through the first 40 minutes or something. And I looked at everybody and said, okay, we did that. You guys want to do this again? Because you guys are all nervous. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> oh, like, unanimously like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and then um, every single time I used to hesitate before I like hit the play button and the recording and I don't do that anymore it's like people sit down and we just go to it and mm-hmm. then when someone is sort of like guest in the room with us they're like how do I interject how do I get into this how do I you know like mm-hmm. and you see people like even with Simon right Simon Chambers yeah um, uh, you know we adore this guy and he um 
and you know I notice and he does it still does it because he's only here like once a year with us he gets into listening mode <laughs> mm. where he's listening to everything that's going on because he's like he's a listener right and, yeah. he, and he forgets and unless we that like he's... go so Simon what do you think about that and he goes oh oh I have a mic in front of me I need to talk <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and I'm, I'm sure that Kyle had that same I don't really recall I just thought he fit with us really well mm. um, but you know to your point Todd with with your comment about like that what I was what I indicated very clearly what was important to me is that we weren't drab, that we captured sort of our fun interaction, but also our sort of experience with sort of the community mm -hmm. and whatever knowledge that we had on the subject of things. And, uh, and then whatever actual connection I had with the early days of these, um, you know, these conventions, because I, I knew a lot of people on the fandom side. So oh, yeah, that's, that's easily, how I met Alan, was yeah. uh, I was running the Otakon music video contest, yep. and Alan sent in videos. Yeah. And uh, you know, like and also Gary, right? The connection with Gary yeah. and Eric. And, and uh, Alan's videos were always like you know really nicely done. Mm -hmm. And you know when when someone sends in stuff that's like particularly nice, you know, like you want to you know yeah. give them some feedback and talk to them and just yeah. find out where they're coming from. Uh, you know, so it was just. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just early on. I I was listening to Mad, and I went a listening mode. I totally forgot where I was going with all that. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I don't know. It, it just made a, a lot of sense. And so Todd, to the point, which is I'm retracting now, mm -hmm. is that um, the thing about it was that variance was important. It was a fundamental thing that we instilled very early on in our sort of anime club. And I thought that was a really good idea of not just having the format that you expect, but uh, like having something at the end or having something in between that you can't account for so that it is not the same thing every single time. Um, I, I love a lot of musicians, but sometimes they produce 12 of the same songs in a year mm. or three years. And while one song is novel, there's no novelty to the rest of the album. And, you know, in the days before iTunes and spending a buck for a song, you would have to spend $25 for a CD and you would get one, possibly two songs out of, you know, other yeah. tracks that were not as nearly as good and they all sounded very similar. And so I thought that was really important for us to have variants, to have people from all kind of perspectives. So even while Todd was sort of bored most of the time when we we're talking about anime, he would always pipe in with uh, trying to understand the concept of what we were talking about. And he would bring a perspective and a question in um, or, you know, sort of the chemistry of, of him with the rest of us worked really well. And so having variance in, in sort of capturing that, capturing the fun, mm -hmm. capturing the humanity of people um, is what it's all about because that's how we feel connected. So. I have to say that's the uh, most polite way anyone has called me weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were on on a show with eight other weirdos. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was. I feel like it was, I'm with my family. <laughs> yeah, we are a weird, strange family. Um, yeah, and and I think that was that was like the the really cool thing that that Kyle brought to this this whole like zoo of people was that. He he was definitely like the contrast. Like a lot of us are just sort of like you know basically weird people, but Kyle was was more like mainstream and centered. I feel, and it was yeah. it was always kind of a surprise that that he was interested in anime and had like articulate thoughts about it. He had you know a viewpoint that uh, that differed from ours, and it may seem kind of pretentious to to compare these things, but. I remember in, in history class where they were talking about Abraham Lincoln and when he composed his cabinet to run the government, he insisted on having people on the, on the cabinet that disagreed with him, mm -hmm. that held opposite views from him, because that way there was always lively debate about every mm -hmm. issue yeah. so that when he had to like make the decision at the end, he had heard – from positively everybody who had something to say about it and was serious about it. And and I think that was always cool because, I mean, you know, nobody is, is the same as anybody else, but Kyle, I feel, was like, you know, a standard deviation or so away from the rest of yeah. us. But um, he was still part of part of the group. 
you know, my my perspective on the the formation of the show was as I identified as an individual. Obviously, Kyle was a more responsible adult than me, mm-hmm. but I was also sort of having a duality in life. I worked, I worked a lot. Mm-hmm. I had a very uh, responsible job. I was a very responsible adult. With, with computers, re- don't you know? With regarding my job, and mm-hmm. that's the thing I did all the time. And I had these sort of side things like the AVs and other and the the Japanese music video subtitling and stuff that I did. And I, you know, had this other great world of friendships through Otakon and other, you know, anime conventions and all my friends there and our sort of online connection through IRC. And, um, but I still could live in both worlds, Mm -hmm. right? I could be a fan of things and also exist as an adult in the real world where at least at that time, most people couldn't live two lives. Work Mm. was all that you did. And then maybe you have kids and a family and you might be into sports or something, but you couldn't be into anime if you weren't like, you know, or That's you like couldn't be totally into comics obsessively and into be it. a responsible adult. And I think I got a sense that Kyle really attached to that same meaning. I didn't mm-hmm. want to talk about the nerds who like anime. It was a, a bunch of otaku, a bunch of people who were fans of things now. You know, Dal is the one who knows what Ataka really <laughs> means, definitely in Japan. Um, and it, it, it doesn't have the pos- most positive of connotations, you know, mm-hmm. comparatively. Um, but but here, Americans were very ignorant sometimes. And so I think that's also our superpower at times uh, with regards to things where we look at, well, it's okay to be an adult and do your model kits. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Um, you know, it's okay to like sports and go to work and not talk about them. Like, it's okay. It's all right. It's not a big thing. And he clearly was exactly that. He was a person who liked, was a fan of, very much a fan of things in Eva as, as by, uh, largest example and totally happy to go to a conservative job and work Mm -hmm. and be a, a responsible adult in that life. And, um... And so he did, and he did it very effectively. And uh, he he added some value to us, and he built friendships with us. Yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting that Kyle was, was interested in Ava because that is like the classic example of an anime that you can just really overthink if, if you are into that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so I guess... Uh, I guess if you want to honor Kyle, <laughs> watch all of Eva. I'm sure Aaron will support that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he, you know, he was a grown man that uh, had had no problem saying that uh, that when he watched that show, he wept like a baby. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I just uh, to kind of reiterate a few things. But, you know, he he was kind of like the complete package as far as like a reviewer, you know, like he, you know, not only was he a writer, but he was also a really good speaker, you know. And the thing that is kind of challenging is to uh, write an effective review or overview of, you know, something that is so highly visual, like, mm. you know, anime. And, you know, without providing any, you know, visuals or information the way like now, it's like it's all about like, you know, anime reviewers or anime anatubers on YouTube, you know, for someone like Kyle to like actually go and talk about something you know, visual without any visual aids and make it sound interesting, like something that you really wanted to, you know, invest time into, you know, I always really appreciate like his, his skill at, you know, at reviewing and making things sound interesting. Yeah. Todd, do you have any like Kyle stories you want to share? Probably the uh, biggest thing that I have about Kyle is how um, just amazing his twitter and facebook accounts <laughs> oh yes yes um <laughs> by yeah. far my favorite person on both social platforms and oh, I, uh oh yeah i want to i want to chime on this when you get when i get a chance <laughs> yeah I, I i can't say enough about how his wit and humor and 
he had some unbelievable things. I, I know Alan mentioned how he had this appearance about him that maybe like news anchor or something like that. <laughs> yeah. He had a post on Facebook. Uh, I believe it was his profile picture for a while where it was him. I think he had like a suit jacket and a tie. And I, if I remember right, there was like an American flag, but that might yep. be my, my memory playing <laughs> some tricks. And it looked like it was every politician's, you know, <laughs> like advertising thing. And he, he looked the part, you know, and he had this strange... I, I honestly don't know that I could tell you what his political leanings were <laughs> because they were so his posts were so bizarre. And I, I actually when I was talking to Alan, uh, when when Alan called me to tell me what what was going on here, um, I had mentioned that he almost had this. He reminded me of like Stephen Colbert, where he kind of played that, oh, yeah. mm. you know, opposite character cool. of what he actually was. And I just I thought it was hilarious. And he just had a wit that absolutely targeted my sense of humor. And yeah. that is something that uh, I've I've always appreciated about Kyle. Um, as a matter of fact, my my wife uh, started following him because of how many times I would read his posts, <laughs> and she would just think they were the most hilarious things ever. And uh, yeah. you know, and it was funny because the two of them, my wife and I have a very sim similar sense of humor, and the two of them, you know, kind of hit it off that way too. They they would go back and forth, and the comments were just hilarious. And you know, yeah, uh, that that's that's by far the one thing you know and Kyle was one of those people like even though I said you know I was a little weirded out by him showing up I, I felt like I hit it off with him absolutely right away like just super nice yeah. guy and you know just uh, awesome um, awesome sense of humor he had such but, a like a wry like deadpan sense of humor with yes like political humor that you could look at him and you're like you know like I, I guess like he almost like gave this like sort of moderate conservative like you know, outwardly appearance, but like most people probably like think that his, his tweets and stuff were like, you know, just very, very serious. But if you, we knew him, right. so we knew that he was like being, you know, quite clever with all of his, all of his political tweets. And I, I just yes. found those all so very, very refreshing and enjoyable because, you know, the last, the last, you know, a handful of years in the political discourse, you know, in in North America and the United States have have been quite divisive, and there's lots of vitriol, and it's actually quite awful and depressing. And then you've got Kyle over in the corner who's like making these really, really subtle jokes that are just it's refreshing. Yeah, yeah I like did, that a lot. He did an amazing job. Like he wasn't. I, I don't feel like he ever made any enemies over the posts. He just struck that sense of wit and humor that uh, yeah. just awesome. Totally agree. I I just so sad that all of his all of his tweets have been like deleted. It's such a I'm it's the such same. a sad loss. Like I wanted to go back and look at some of them and like pick a few you know great ones because it's almost like you know sometimes you see like an article on Facebook or something and it's like you know like life imitates art or vice versa and you look at it and you're like not sure if that's real or not. And it's like, oh, it's an Onion article. Or like that other one where it's, I don't, I can't remember what it is. Like there's something that sounds like the New Yorker, but it's like, you know, clearly another Onion-like parody, you know, mm -hmm. you know, thing. But that's kind of like the impression that like a lot of his, uh, his, his tweets kind of had where it's like, oh, uh, yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. The, um, yep. even yep. though with all the, the joking that, you know, he would also where we would have like dinner or lunch every once in a while he would call me on stuff <laughs> like you know he would call me out on something i remember we were he was uh he was making some comedy he was telling me about somebody um that he worked with that was uh and the inquirer is like a local paper for philadelphia area and he was talking about like the tech reviewer of like Philadelphia Inquirer or something and this guy had been doing it and in that context, you know, mm -hmm. it, someone doing it for 20 years reporting on technology was very, uh, you know, it was a tough thing to do. Um, and so I made some comment because where my view of the comment came from was such the inaccuracy that is reported on technology and, um, you know, getting, getting, getting things correct in media. Uh, and that this isn't a new problem. This has been around for you know thirty years. Yeah, when you got a yeah. when you got a deadline every day, it's just like how yeah. rigorous yeah. can you be? And so uh, the five o'clock news version of new iPhone feature, right? Whatever it is, is is really kind of or cyber hacked the, because they did something like 
if you really understand what's being reported on it, it's, you have it's a better no way insight. That facile, right. Um, or they just make it dramatic for something. And so I made some comment and and so he's like, Alan, <laughs> yelled at me in the restaurant about it. Like, yeah, he will he, call me out on stuff. And I'm like, you yeah. know, you're right. I, I'm being cynical. He's right. Yes, he was rigorous in his thinking. And yeah. when you when you talked with him, he expected you to be serious and yeah. rigorous about your opinions. He made me uh, uh, double check my my uh, when I wrote stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spelled oh, yeah. things correctly. Cared about grammar. <laughs> he, he just sort of that little Kyle in the back of my head made me do things correctly. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember we were like having lunch one time and uh, I was doing Otakon's AM music AMV contest and he asked me something about like, you know, did you have a favorite AMV contest? And I was like, huh, do I have a favorite? And I, and I was like, no, you can't really have a favorite. It's like saying, like, well, you know, the second daughter, if she hadn't gotten that B, I might have liked her more than the <laughs> first daughter. Um, and and that was sort of like my way of explaining to him that it's, it is it is that personal, that you can't just say, oh, this one's better than that one, period. It's like every, it's like every child has their own personality and their own strengths. Yeah. And their own failings, and you can't just like lop them down on a scalar, t you know, set of valuations like that. Yeah. And and I think he understood what I was getting at um, when I sort of like talked about it in that mm -hmm. roundabout way. And I'm not sure a lot of other people would have. Yeah. Um, I I have all kinds of moments, and I could be I could I could fill a three hour thing a mm -hmm. about it. Um, Brian, do you, uh, aside from the, the notable song, <laughs> what, uh, do you have any kind of like moments from being from the other side of listening, isolated away from us? Like, do you have any thoughts about like something you remember that was novel to you? Well, I, if, kind of to what Todd had just mentioned, I, you know, I, I really felt like I got to know him after, after I'd stopped podcasting and been kind of in the podcast world and yeah. we were friends on Facebook. For, mm -hmm. for many years. And I would have to explain to people at work who he was. I was like, look what, look what Kyle wrote. And they're like, who's Kyle? And I'm like, well, I used to do this podcast and he did this podcast and uh, it's another fellow podcaster. And anyway, don't worry about it. Just read what he wrote. Because <laughs> often his uh, uh, political take uh, matched very well with my uh, uh my boss at the time's uh, political yeah. uh opinion so uh, <laughs> uh she, she was often uh, uh very interested. but but it it was nice then to uh kind of, because i i guess when most people think about if you think dow and kda interaction you think about the song and yeah kyle's thinking about his life and what you know what's coming next and I'm trying to sway him to not be serious about things and <laughs> yeah. to, to to not worry about it and um, to to see then you know through his Facebook feed uh, it, uh, him you know getting married having having a child it, it was interesting to see that aspect after I I was kind of out of the uh, of that uh, that podcasting world to to see how he grew that way but uh yeah very sharp wit and i, I always look forward to uh, to his posts uh and and as uh, someone had mentioned before uh whatever his political views were uh he wasn't afraid to call anyone out on no. any kind of bs that he found which nowadays is is pretty refreshing mm -hmm. uh, i would say so um yeah i i missed that uh, aspect of him you know absolutely let's um uh, all right, so let's do the first clip. Let's celebrate it with the song. <laughs> By the way, couldn't agree more with everything Dow said there. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, I I clipped it out of the show. Everything is very raw, is very loud. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, certainly, uh, depending on a reaction, I might just directly put it in in the edit. But um, let's uh, let's all share a moment, uh, however long it might be, uh, with with reference to that. Now, I've been listening to Otaku Generation. I know I talk about them all the time here. What's up, fellas? And uh, up, one of their regulars, uh, Kyle Dragonash, like who does uh, uh, anime reviews or <laughs> anime reviews. Um, it seems like he's thinking about giving up 
anime. Not just thinking. And uh, I'm not going to sit idly by what happens. <laughs> and I'm not even that into anime. <laughs> I'm not stand by and watch someone lose their passion. So Kyle Dragonash from Otaku Generation, this song's for you. I'm making sort of an announcement oh, here. Um, I'm, I've been going through sort of an existential angst lately. That's not what and I've I been sound having like. a lot of trouble summoning up any passion. Oh fuck for you! Anybody. It's very really hard for me to say this because um, I don't know the, the love and the passion and the drive is just not there. And uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I turned 35 a few weeks back ago. A few weeks and back I'm, ago. What does that mean? Analyzing and examining where I am in my life. He's like having a monkey. He's eloquent. Just wait. You're ruining it. I think anime is something that I may I may need to leave by the wayside. Here it comes. Ah. Brace for impact. <laughs> Deep impact. Oh, <laughs> KDA. I didn't know what to do. Everybody hold hands. Everybody got got hold hands. No. Right. Anybody got a lighter? <laughs> Kyle Dragon Ash was giving up anime. What are you going to do, Kyle? No You're going to watch Lost? Yeah. You're going to watch reruns of Friends and Seinfeld? Best part's coming. I'm crying. 35. <laughs> it's a good time to be alive. <laughs> what you said you wanted to find a wife. <laughs> you can safely assume. You're not helping. She'll never wear that Sailor Moon costume. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do, Kyle? You're going to go find a wife uh-huh. who tells you what to watch on TV? She likes NBC. <laughs> Kyle Dragon. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Don't give up anime. <laughs> it's the one thing we've got in our lives. Oh. Knowing that you're out there watching it <laughs> and keeping up with it. Don't give up. All right, I've got to say, I've hey, got to um, say. Oh, sorry. I'll wait. Kyle, man. <laughs> Stick with the anime, dude. Oh, do you I mean? don't know. Do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. not going to give it up if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> you, you, you missed know? the best part. You talked to over. He said, what the fuck was that? Yeah, I know. I heard, <laughs> I heard that. Um, you know, that, is, that manages to be both the, the nicest thing and the creepiest thing anybody <laughs> has ever done for me. Just, really a man. Dude, but wait. I also want to say this. When the fuck are you guys going to write a song about me? <laughs> he doesn't know me from Adam. I'm just some I don't have that talent, nobody. man. Kyle, don't tempt me. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that is we're celebrating. Uh, that is that is a fundamental uh, – that's a fundamental clip of, you know, how mm-hmm. Kyle reacted to everything. Uh, <laughs> It's just, and you know, what's interesting, and I'm not recording the video of it, but it's just seeing like, you know, Dal and, and Todd just respond <laughs> to, <laughs> to that. Uh, it's hard not to laugh. Mm-hmm. It really, really, yeah, uh, crazy. I wish, I know that, I know that song is somewhere on some drive somewhere, somewhere. But uh, but that was show twenty one. If you guys want to, and that that's also the sweet potato guy. You know that was <laughs> the whole story about that, and uh, you know Dow's story regarding that um, <laughs> was interesting. So um, yes, yeah, so that was show twenty one, and uh, I haven't listened to that stuff in I don't know, how long? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which since is, we recorded why would it. You? <laughs> you know the um, the interesting thing is every once in a while I look at the geography map of like where people are listening, and it is all over the planet. Uh, in places you, I wouldn't expect, uh, but but there are there are there are people all over the planet, and um, and that is only you know that that isn't the entire stats because the the podcasting host eventually resets their stats here and there every mm-hmm. once in a while and data gets lost, um, but I will say and I think it's it's probably more accurate than not. Millions of people have heard Kyle. They know who this guy is. Um, and w- 
whether they took the effort to stalk them on Facebook or Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of people have been impacted by the humor of this guy. And uh, it's funny how just doing something um, has, has just sort of impacted so many people. Um, and I don't, I don't think much about it other than that we sit here and we do it. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, I think about what we're doing and then getting that out there for the audience that, that exists. Um, and I never think about the sort of the long tail of the impact of that. Because uh, there are people that literally we were the show itself is over 13 years old. So Damn. there are people who have graduated college now mm -hmm. have kids and have, you know, take them to conventions. And wow. somewhere in, in their life, we were involved in their uh, yeah. sort of recognizing they can be an adult and exist and whatnot. Um, and we're really sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little sorry. Hey, look, um, if you got to know who Kyle was, I'm not sorry. Yeah, but the thing was, when, when you hear a joke, there's sort of this, this mental gymnastics that you go through to, like, reverse engineer the viewpoint of the joke because it, it seems funny to you. And I think that was with Kyle, that was always a cool thing because whenever he would say something, you're like, oh, wait, yeah, that's that's where that joke is coming from. And and that I think that was kind of an educational thing in a weird way. Yeah, uh, he would. There would be times where we were like hanging out, we're watching something, and he would, or even with like a music video or something, mm -hmm. and he would say something interesting to me that I never thought that um, he knew anything about. But he was like talking about, uh, and I know I'm going to screw it up, but he was using a musical term about sort of the pattern and the rhythm of mm -hmm. of and how he loved that aspect of something, and it wasn't just to find a political edge to be witty about. Yeah. He was never he was never trying hard. He was it was just never was. like trying to just make a joke to put people down. It was always to question yeah. something, to examine it, to to see the truth in it. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I kept in touch with him more over the I years. I wish I had oh, like sorry. still I wish I still had access to his like Twitter and Facebook stream that yeah. I could like pick out a few a few things just but you know, mm -hmm. just gone. There's um, one vlog, and I'm going to have to find it, and maybe I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, my YouTube is not much of anything and never really was, but there is a moment where we're, Kyle and I went to a bookstore, I guess, when bookstores were really more around. Um, and uh, we he wanted to buy, like, the first issue of Ataku USA. Uh, mm. And that was, like, important for him, and so I made a video out of it, and it was just me and Kyle. Um, well, that, he made a uh, he made an AMV slash fan parody, right? That I remember very well with the Scrubs. Did he make that with the Ava, or am I totally going crazy? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I thought he made like a parody where like it was the Doctor Cox speech well, about how much he doesn't care about the fact that <laughs> him and JD have been together for a year working together, and then yeah. it was Gendo saying that too. It's Shinji. possible. I hope that exists. <laughs> what is, well, that's so, a fever so dream. <laughs> you just reminded me of something very early, how we got to know who Kyle was and how he sort of surfaced and exposed himself to us. Um, and thankfully, Aaron, you know, uh, Kibasa not Aaron is a present because I'm sure there would be a dirty joke with that. Um, but what we did is we had this sort of – we were in love with Firefly when we started the show. And so we had um, – I, I don't know. We had some kind of contest – uh, and what he did is he took uh, the um, the General Lee, mm -hmm. right, uh, from from Dukes of Hazard, and he sort of MS painted out the the side door, the number, and he put like some kind of Chinese character, and he called it General Show, uh, and so he was like a runner up in in winning the uh, the contest or whatever. We didn't pick him as the winner. We're such jerks, you were such <laughs> jerks. so we 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 uh we enslaved him to a show and <laughs> he brought lots of humor to us um so let's go down uh i see it labeled by you bryce as <laughs> the letter i don't know how long this is that's a short one. Oh, okay the longest one in the super mario bros that's like a minute and a half though, okay so, so maybe we'll, we'll pretty, play that they're pretty quick <laughs> yeah play that last all right so let's uh let's check out the letter Speaking of production IG, there was a news item. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let me just jump back. Uh, the Ava Thin Pack, you can get more information on that at shrinkster.com slash who's breathing heavily. Somebody's breathing heavily. It's turning me on. <laughs> shrinkster.com slash A6J, as in Jesus. And, um, <laughs> and, um, Not really. Wow. Good Ava reference. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it is the season of Christmas. 
I don't know. I agree. I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's where's my mind. I agree. Right? It's, pretty, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, okay, so... Um, all right, so let's play the theme music. So the irony for it was that I had this turned off. No one could hear it, but it was sitting here playing on loop because the software that I built a long time ago, I loaded up, and for some reason I must have tapped it on loop. So this thing that never ends, the theme music. Uh, and that was that last one was from show 28, if you want to check that out. Uh, so this is from show 45. And I'm only just letting people know if they really want to get a sense of Kyle and never gone back to the old shows. Well, there you go. Here's, here's your, uh, your anchor to that. All right, so theme music that never ends. All right, our first, our first story comes from Studio Ghibli, or Ghibli, or Ghibli, depending on your pronunciation, which has released the trailer for its next animated film, Ged no Senki, or Ged's War Story. It's based on the Earthsea novels by Ursula K. Le Guin, and it looks incredibly, incredibly beautiful. Although with Studio Ghibli, is this music ever going to stop? <laughs> it will not now. Oh, <laughs> Uh, also, before the next clip, I, I looked at the show, show number, um, sorry, the one with KDA is the topic. Yeah. Uh, he did, you did mention the show notes about him making it, show 84, him, he said he made his first AMV, he meant, so I didn't make that up. <laughs> that was a thing he made. I oh, yeah. Uh, the order, but it exists somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> I'd have to look to see if I, I was going to make sure I didn't just make God. that up in my head. Yeah. The video. <laughs> it, well, that's, that's why the whole point of it is it, 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 it doesn't seem unlike him. He would just do a thing. <laughs> um, and uh, like one day I, I came over to his house and he had bought a projector and he was projecting Mad Men on, on his wall and he was watching. And he's like, Alan, I just bought a projector. I go, I can see that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just sometimes he just would do a thing. No, no question about it. Um, OK, so I'm staring at this thing that says Voltron. So oh, yeah. I'm just going to I'm going to play it. We're going to find out. This is says show 42. So I am not sabotaging your segue you're, this You're going to let me get started and actually... Good, good. Yeah, maybe I should kill everybody's mic. No, no. <laughs> this this okay. is Otaku it's, it's News. Okay. All right, All right. You got this right All now. right, activate interlock. Dino Therms connected. Mega thrusters go. From days of long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The legend of Kyle Dragon... Wait, wait, wait. No, it's actually a different legend. Anybody? Anybody? And Coulter. Uh, <laughs> No! Why did you put that in my head? But you're so close. It's Voltron. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ann Coulter, Voltron. I don't. I have a hard time getting I, them. They look the same. They really are. They're both about as equally masculine. <laughs> yeah, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, he improv that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so the best. Um, so relevant. Uh, he, even today, I, uh, well, whatever. Years later. Yeah, just a very long time ago. Okay, so. Uh, it may have actually gotten worse. <laughs> so, show 29, I see best character. What, do oh, you yeah, remember he, that? Um, this isn't a funny one. This is one of his examples of doing a good job of, like, you know. You know dealing with us? Not dealing with us, but like, you know, <laughs> express his opinion on, you know, these, these are the Oscars he was doing, the mm-hmm. end of year rewards. This is the best oh, character yeah, design he gave Yeah, it to. yeah, we had some Yeah, so I did a good job. A well, less funny, but more. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, yeah. Let's, let's give a listen and uh, see what it's about. Best character design. Mm, pretty difficult. Um, some some good, uh, good visuals this year. I would say it's a tie kind of between um, the place promised in our early days mm-hmm. and Samurai Champloo. And uh, the Asuka, I think, goes to Samurai Champloo. Uh, Very original, memorable character designs. They're very simple, but they're very effective. And I think Matt Groening's rule comes into play here. If you've ever heard Matt Groening talk about uh, animated characters, he says that the the guiding rule is that they have to be characters you can recognize in silhouette, if they're just an outline. That, That to be an effective character... You have to be able to recognize them if they're just an outline. And that's definitely true of these guys, Mugen, Jin, and Fu. I'd recognize Fu anyway. Oh, I know. Who wouldn't? <laughs> you just want to pick anyway. her up and carry her away and... and Play with her squirrel. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was, the funny thing, I, rem- I remember the Oscars he did. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. the one I remember so well, so I grabbed yeah. it. I, um, I remember... One day he just handed me this artwork, which was his Naruto. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I still have that anywhere. Yeah, uh, I that. might have a picture somewhere. Um, so and, him is Naruto, but yeah. And then he did. Um, oh, oh, you know what? Check that list. The the paper I printed out because 
uh, I had checked the shows. I think at the Christmas time show, I had the the lyrics to to uh, Kyle Dragon Ash, "Don't Give Up on Me." Do you do you see that anywhere? On this page? Yeah, on that page. They yeah. handed it to me. Let me look at it. Okay, so oglink.com slash one y r two. Oh, I, uh, I know that that's what that was. Yeah, that's <laughs> what that is. Uh, and that that is the KDA lyrics if you want to download them. Though I don't know where you get the song because even even Brian doesn't know where they are. <laughs> There's someone I'll, I'll dig in the basement if I can find a clean version. I'll send it to you. Well, you said uh, I remember you'd sent me the link from Podshow, and Podshow doesn't exist anymore. Oops. You, you put that up, and uh, yeah, well, whatever. I mean, that's a long time ago. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's no, no Pod harm. Show. <laughs> yeah, Podshow. Remember the music wow. network. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, and that's how I, I grabbed it. Um, okay, so let's... Hey, Alan, have you tried archive.org? Because uh, they're pretty good about some of that stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. I, w- I would look it up before you before you totally ab- abandon all hope. I, I, I know that I have it somewhere. I just don't know where <laughs> that that right there is an uh effort yeah uh, well data you sad. can't uh, recall is is basically yeah. you lost all right yeah. so let's that, listen to... that's a constant undertone in my life i know i have it somewhere yeah mm-hmm. um let's listen to the super mario one hey everybody it is time this this is otaku news it sure is kyle and what do we got we got a bunch of stuff we got a bunch of really interesting stuff um First, uh, this one comes thanks to Paul, and my voice is really, really cracking tonight. I sound like I'm about 14, so I apologize. Um, <clears throat> apparently on my birthday, I'm reversing in age. Sweet. But, um, <laughs> how did you manage that? I don't know. I've discovered the elixir of life. But you guys all remember Super Mario Brothers, right? Yeah. You remember yes. the uh, the theme music, the theme song that went to it? Okay, that's enough. Okay, that, that's, really, that's really quite enough. But uh, the reason I brought that up is... Um, Paul sent this to me. This is a really funny thing. It's it's a news item about a fun little prank gone horribly, horribly awry. It, the story goes like this. In Ravenna, Ohio, this past weekend, five teenage girls thought it would be fun to make up a bunch of life-size magical question blocks from Super Mario Brothers and scatter them around in different places all over the town where they lived. And it was supposed to be a, a kind of a goofy, whimsical, little artsy thing just to make people laugh. They got the idea from a website which uh, shows instructions on how to make the boxes. They're about like two, two feet square on each side, along with things like fire flowers, coins, and one-up marsh- marshmallows. <laughs> Mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, beeps. Um, <laughs> mushrooms. They made 17 of these boxes, covered them up with shiny gold foil and question marks, and in the middle of the night, they crept out and left them at various locations all over their town, including places like the county courthouse, the local high school, a church, and a public library. Um, all I can say is it, is it must have seemed like such a good idea at the time, <laughs> but uh, the, the local police, it is safe to say, were not amused. The next morning when they went out on the rounds and they discovered shiny metallic cubes with question marks <laughs> sitting in front of important public buildings all over town. <laughs> so hazmat teams and the bomb squad were called in to investigate whereupon the girls immediately confessed, and now they're facing possible criminal charges. Now, I'll tell you, I'm going to take an unpopular position here, and, and like, like, like that's something new. Um, when I first saw this, I thought to myself, geez, you know, come on, guys, take, take a joke. It's not that big a deal. Take a deep breath. It's just some kids having some fun. But I guess the more I thought about it, if I were a cop driving around and I saw a shiny metallic box with a question mark sitting in front of a courthouse, I might be a little freaked out, too. It's the Riddler. <laughs> yeah, right. I, that, why do you mind said that today? It's like a, a crime perpetrated by one of the Batman, Batman villains. The Googler. <laughs> the Googler. So, um, anyway, girls, if you're listening, it was, a, it was a great, great idea, but next time, try to, try to think it through a little bit more. There you go. Um, you know, there's reminding me of so Anime Next had invited us as guests uh, one year. And so they were asking for a picture that they could put up. So I uh, I didn't really have any real camera, but I had this wide-angle lens, and I used my video camera took a picture. And what I did is, and this was Kyle's idea, I photoshopped him in twice. So you see him <laughs> on the futon, and what he's doing is he's holding something, like manga or something uh, upside down, reading it with, like, interest on the couch. And then he's in the background, like, waving his hand, like, you know, uh, like, 
like, hey, hello, I'm in the background. Uh, you know, I'm this little short guy. No one can see me, you know, in the background. And uh, so, you know, it says a lot about about him. Uh, it really does. This guy was just fun. Um, and I, I definitely will miss him. Um, I don't know. We've talked a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think, I, in honor to Kyle, probably not enough. I don't know. I don't know where we we end up here. I definitely want to close out with the Steam Boy from show number eleven. It's where it all started and where it, it all ends. But um, you know, I think it's in, important that in death is never really a solution or an answer. And um, whatever happened, I think we're all going to remember him in our own sort of special way. And um, you know. Even though we're celebrating him now, uh, if anyone out there who, who's listened and loves Kyle for who he was, um, you know, please email us and share your thoughts. Uh, certainly, we will read them. Um, there were some comments. Uh, you have a sheet I, now, though, oh, so you're looking at me, but oh, you took it away. I <laughs> took it away. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, you want to read some of the comments? There were just a couple people that were on the Facebook when I, I put out a Facebook post. and. Uh, Mike writes, I remember the episodes he was on with the rest of you were so fun to listen to, and I remember even emailing him a couple of times. Um, this really stinks, and I'm sorry to hear about his passing as well. Yeah. Um, so sorry what happened. I remember his early days and his quote-unquote love of Steam Boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so what are these these links we've got here? Okay, so, um, you know, if, if you do feel like you don't have a support system, you feel like you're having a problem uh, and you need some help, um, I don't know if I put it on there, but betterhelp.com. Uh, if you go there, you can, um, you know, go through some forms and find some professional help. And then also, uh, Bryce, you also had a link for... Uh, no, nami.org is the, okay. uh, the way they have. I have okay. I mean, my family have personal experience with it, so I can okay. recommend it. Okay, okay. but uh, nami.org is oglink.com slash 1YRW. And, and then um, we have a Google link uh, to uh, the obituary. Um, yeah, and that's Google, G O O dot G L slash V six N B R Q. And I'll I'll definitely have these links in the show notes, and please please look there. Yeah. Um, if you do want to attend, uh, I certainly don't. I wouldn't recommend you coming all over from like a whole other state mm-hmm. unless it's convenient. Uh, the uh, the service I believe is is this Saturday, um, and the family in the obituary mentions um, you know donations you can make if you if you yeah, want to do don't that. send flowers. Do some good in the world. Yeah, um, so I'll I'll put those the links and information there, um, and uh, I think uh, I think it's time for us to. End this show with Kyle on how it all started, and um, we'll uh, we'll see you all next week. Now we're going to go ahead and introduce Kyle, our newest official cast member. Yeah, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And uh, he's gonna be all nervous as hell. We get the torture him. Time now Start for the, the weekly plan. reviews. reviews. Okay, so Kyle, what do you have for us well, this thank, week? Yeah, thanks, Alan. And first, uh, just to make something clear, I don't really think of myself as replacing Bryce. Bryce, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> well, not really replacing. I thought he was talking to me right now. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping his seat warm while he's gone, although actually I just noticed that his seat still is warm, and in fact it's <laughs> moist. Too, yeah, and, and when, he comes, when he comes back for holidays, he can sit in your lap. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, oh, maybe not. Yeah. You can talk about the first thing that pops up, the economy. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to do things a little bit differently from Bryce, because uh, usually, Bryce, you would do four or five titles, a couple of anime and a couple of manga, or, or man-gay, as you say it. Um, I'll admit right <laughs> off the bat that I'm not oh, a big manga reader, that. never have been, so I'm going to concentrate mostly on anime. So while you guys were down at Otakon having fun and, and monkeying about like a bunch of hyperactive fourth graders on crystal meth, um, <laughs> I was at hard at work up here watching anime because, dudes, these cartoons don't watch themselves. And uh, I hope you appreciate my sacrifice. So uh, tonight, Way to I, take uh, one for the team. That right. lets you in the <laughs> Simpsons. I give and I give and I give. And, and oh, this is what he gets. the cleanest dishes I've ever seen. <laughs> That's right. Um, 
Tonight I'm going to be looking at uh, two anime films that came out in Japan late last year. They ran in a few art house cinemas here in the U.S. Uh, this spring and came out on DVD here in the last month or two. One of them is a genuine masterpiece. The other one is an abomination in the eyes of God. First, uh, first the good one. It's called, I'm going to have to take a deep breath for this because it's a long title, The Place Promised in Our Early Days, or as it was titled in Japan, Beyond the Clouds, The Promised Place. Either way, either title, it won second prize for most pretentious title ever at the Kyle Dragon. That sounds like a euphemism for the time I took my girlfriend's panties off. Which one? Place Promised in Our Early Days? Yeah, either one. Yeah, they, they, they both work. Regardless, Which girlfriend? No, you know, don't tell me. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't talk about don't that, please. There. Yeah, regardless, please. Uh, moving on, you can find out a little information about shrinkster.com slash 7J1. Uh, this was written and directed by Makoto Shinkai, who also created the OAV for Voices of a Distant Star, Very good star. which uh, stands out not only because it's just an extraordinarily awesome movie, but also because Shinkai created it by himself uh, in his apartment on a Mac. Uh, for this new one, uh, Beyond the Clouds, our promised pants or whatever it was. I forget the title <laughs> myself now. Promised panties. Uh, he, uh, Beyond <laughs> the Clouds, pulled down my panties. That's it. That's the title. Look it up. Um, he had a full studio at his disposal, but he still did a lot of the uh, a lot of the work himself, and and it shows. It is an incredibly beautiful piece of work. The animation is gorgeous. There's just an unbelievable attention to visual detail. The music is good. The story is, it's um very sophisticated, complex, and compelling. And the characters I think are very nicely drawn, and they're and they're very believable. Uh, in a very short nutshell, the the story is a a science fiction romance, which was also the case for Voices of a Distant Star. And um, it, it definitely has a similar kind of atmosphere, kind of sad and, and melancholy, but um, for what it's worth, it does have a, a happier ending than Voices, although that's not giving too much away. Uh, if you're only into happy, fun, shiny, sunny, shoujo, wacky goodness, this is probably not for you. Um, there are a few minor plot holes and some inconsistencies, nothing, nothing too serious that gets in the way of the story. Bottom line, it is a truly fantastic film, and I hope that uh, everybody who's listening will go out and uh, rent it or buy it. It can't recommend it enough was um, put up by our friends here at Dave ADV, and uh, while you're at it, if you're uh, if you haven't already, definitely go out and see Voices of a Distant Star. You can also get some information on that at uh, shrinkster dot shrinkster dot com slash seven j one. Shrinkster dot com. Now this one's gonna hurt. Moving on to the cinematic seppuku that is Steam Boy. Okay, I'm <laughs> sold. You didn't, sold you on didn't, seppuku or sold on Steam Boy? You didn't seppuku. like Steam Boy. <laughs> I did not like... Well, let, let, let me explain. Oh, okay. um, I really, really, really wanted to like it. Um, and I will admit that the, the animation was probably some of the best animation I've ever seen in my life. Maybe the most beautiful animation I've ever seen. And I'm not exaggerating. It's gorgeous. Unfortunately, everything else about it is just a pile of cow turd. The plot is, is boring. It makes no freaking sense. It's, the, the film is at least half an hour too long. And that's even not the director's cut. The, the regular version is half an hour too long. And um, it doesn't end at the end. It keeps going during the closing credits so that if you want the full story, you've got to sit still watching for another five or six minutes through this painfully dull montage, which I am told sets up a story for a sequel, which nobody wants. But um, (laughs) the story is is basically a a retro-futuristic sci-fi action adventure set in London in the 1860s. Think... Think Last Exile, only stupid. Um, <laughs> the, the main character is a boy named Ray Steam, like the, the stuff you get when you boil water. And, and that's another problem because his name is Steam and by a, a wonderful coincidence, the kid and his, his father and grandfather are all inventors who have come up with a wonderful new way of harnessing steam power. That's right, their name and their profession overlap. It's, a, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's really stupid. It's incredibly Japanese. Y- it is, it is. I know, and that's all too common, but what are you going to do? Uh, also, the main female character is this whiny American girl named Scarlett O'Hara. Hello, Japan. Hi, Kyle here. That name's already taken. We had a Scarlett O'Hara. She was in a little film you may have heard of called Gone with the Wind. But frankly, they Charlotte, but they don't give a damn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Frankly, Shinji. Um, <laughs> the, the, the biggest problem that I had with Steam Boy, and again, I wanted to like this, was the fact that it was written and directed by Katsuhiro Otomo. The same Katsuhiro Otomo who gave us Akira. You know, Akira, the Citizen Kane of anime? Well, I'm Rosebud. told... Rosebud. Uh, <laughs> Kaneda! I'm told um, <laughs> yeah. that, that he spent the last decade working on this film, slaving over it, drawing a lot of the animation himself. In a sensory deprivation chamber. Apparently. That's the only thing that explains it. The visual quality is there. It's great to look at, but the narrative is a failure. Uh, find out some more information at shrinkster.com slash 7J1. 
Uh, this came out of the uh, legendary Toho studio. For what it's worth, the English dub, if you're into that, features um, some really excellent actors, including Patrick Stewart and Anna Paquin. Um, why they associated themselves with this I, is beyond me. Just to, uh, just because to they heard this Japanese stuff was real popular. Just I to sort of give a counterpoint on that, I actually liked it. Maybe I'm just a little bit more used to the way that the Japanese tell their stories and things like that. I mean, I don't know. I, um, I know you're really into anime, but it, it just, I don't know, it just didn't, it, it, it wasn't anything like terribly outrageous in terms of the story. I mean, it's not going to set the world on fire, but it was at the very least, it was on par with most of the anime that I've seen right. in terms it, of the story. It had it had the same problem that Acura did that the third act was just way too long and it it, re- it kept tripping over itself and repeating itself over and over again. Maybe but that's where it lost yeah, me because I hate repetitive stuff. I mean, I hate repetitive stuff. I mean, I hate repetitive stuff. <laughs> Smack him. Yeah, but I, I, I <laughs> suppose again, I suppose I'm just kind of used to that, right? Um, I've got one more thing if we've got time, and that yep, is got it, plenty. Is, it is not anime and it's not manga. It's actually American. It's a little thing I like to call The Simpsons. The uh, complete sixth season, which was just released on DVD a few days ago. And uh, if you're like me, and, and I certainly am, uh, you revere <laughs> Matt. <laughs> you got this. See, jokes are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny. Um, Matt Groening is a demigod, and uh, if you're like me, you think that The Simpsons is basically the greatest thing that's ever been aired on television. Woo-hoo! Family Guy. So you, you Futurama. <laughs> okay, okay, close Futurama second. Futurama and Family Guy, I think I would beat. Close, sec- close second and third. <laughs> I love um, them all, to be honest. Where would there be Family Guy and Fut- Never mind. Well, there wouldn't be without it, but anyway. Yeah. Well, it, they're all basically copying the Flintstones, really. Um, I got mine over the weekend, and I've watched probably most of the episodes now at least two or three times. Wait. This Copying the Flintstones. When did Fred ever smack a giant chicken into a propeller blade? <laughs> Third season. Oh. Um, oh. And it was it wasn't a chicken. It was Wilma. Um, oh. But this it one goes had, with the time. After, she was, <laughs> after she'd been tarred and feathered. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Okay, moving on. Yeah, this uh, this season number six has some truly classic episodes. Uh, Sideshow Bob runs for mayor. The Simpsons go to Itchy and Scratchy Land. Homer goes to Clown College. Some really great ones. And even if you haven't been buying these collections from the beginning, this one is, is worth owning. Of course, I would probably say that about all of them. The The one bad thing about it is the box. For, for some reason, this time, Fox decided to release this set in a, in a cheesy plastic container shaped like Homer's head. Yeah, I saw that today oh. at the store. Yeah, now... It a would, lot of them, too. It would be fine. It would be one thing if they had been doing that from the beginning. Interesting little boxes, but they haven't. They've just put out normal... Looks like a backpack boxes. for a dog or something. <laughs> A backpack for it? Yeah, it, it, it really does, he said, agreeing, not really knowing what Alan was talking about. Um, <laughs> the, um, the other five seasons that they've done, out, that they've done, they line up all nice and neat on the shelf in, in my study, but this one just, it looks weird. Now, um, presciently, Fox, I think, figured that fanboys like me would get all bitchy and demand that they put out a regular box, but that's kind of a double entendre if you think about it. But yeah. um, you can write or call them and they'll send one to you and I'm probably going to do that but the minute I do I'm sure I'll be on some Fox mailing list for the rest of my life and I'll start getting bombarded with emails from Rupert Murdoch and Bill O'Reilly. So... <laughs> to your cell phone is where they, they go. Over here. Okay, move the SWAT team in. That's right. Um, <laughs> That's for right. more information again, shrinkster.com 7J1. That is it for this week. I think next week I, I may look at a couple of... Um, anime series, possibly Eureka 7, which is still um, airing on Japanese TV, and Fafner, which uh, is now out on DVD. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go uh, have cocktails with Misato and Asuka. It's two for one night, and Pen Pen's buying. Blah, 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 blah. Podcaster, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the podcast Otaku Generation. Their continuing mission to explore strange new fandoms, to seek out new anime, new manga, to boldly go where a bunch of guys and a few women have gone before.
podcast. <laughs> That's wrong. Podcasting. Podcasting. <laughs>